Hello, I'm Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician, and welcome to another one of our video shorts on current topics. Today I'm going to replace a standard single pole switch for a dining room light fixture with a Lutron 600 watt dimmer switch. Same white Decora style slide dimmer. So let's get started. Okay, so as usual we start with safety. Make sure the circuit is dead. I've gone to the circuit panel, shut off the breaker for this whole circuit so the entire circuit is off. And I proved that by checking it with my meter at the socket and the dining room fixture and check the switch, turn it on and off and the light does not come on. There is no power in this circuit. So remove the faceplate. And always remember to go to the safety page of our website for other details on safety and fundamentals of safe work practices around working with electricity. Okay, face plate is removed. Now we'll pull out the device. Okay, now when you take out a device, one thing you want to watch for is make sure if it's been painted around the tabs of the device, make sure you score that with a sharp knife just so that if you pull the device off and there's paint stuck to it, you can end up with a great big blister in the paint that you'll have to fix up later. So remove the old single pole switch. All right. Now I see they've used the push-in terminal connections here. I'm not a real big fan of the push-in connections. I like to bend my loop around and use the screw terminals for my connections. But with the uh, single pole dimmer switch that we're going to be using, it's a pigtail wire connection so we'll be splicing the wires together using some morettes. So we do have a grounded device so it's important to have the ground wire attached to the, to the switch. We're going to disconnect this device and get ready to install the dimmer switch. Okay, again, just to verify that the power is off, I'm using my Fluke T5 1000 meter. It's an ammeter and voltmeter, as well as a continuity tester. Now I've got my black lead jammed into the ground screw on the switch. Holding that firmly, I'm going to check on the black wire, the terminal. I've got zero volts, and I've got zero on the red. You want to check both just in case, but I have a pretty good idea how this circuit is wired. The black is going to be the hot. It's coming out of a hot splice back there. The red wire from a three wire is going up to the dining room fixture. And uh, power must carry on from that outlet onto another receptacle somewhere in the circuit or a light. But you want to just check all your terminals to ground. No voltage here. Zero. Zero on the red. You can even check across your terminals with the switch off. If this was hot, you would see 120 volts across the circuit. And with the switch on, you would see zero. But as you can see, we've got nothing here. Circuit's dead. We can remove the switch. Okay, so I'm just going to snip these wires off now because they are using the push-in connections. There's a way to release those, but I'm likely not going to reuse this switch anyway, so I'm just going to cut all three wires, the ground and both, both of the power wires. And I'm going to shorten these up just a little bit because that's going to be an awful lot of wire to stuff back into the box when you add it onto the pigtails I have on the dimmer switch. So I'm going to cut off just a little bit more, make sure I leave them long enough that if I ever do put a switch back in here, there's enough room to make the connections comfortably. So, strip the insulation using the number 14 gauge slot on my T-stripper. And the bare ground, you just want to make sure, you see there's a lot of paint on the wires in here. Probably sprayed the primer on, so I just want to scrape any paint that may be on the terminals, or sorry, on the wire. Make sure you get a good connection. So, you see a little paint there on the ground wire, scrape that off. And we're ready to splice in the new dimmer switch. Okay, I've got my dimmer switch ready to tie in. Splice the ground first. As I've mentioned in many of my articles, I always like to work connecting devices. I like to connect the ground first and then the other wires. And removing a device, I like to cut the ground last. So, as you see, they've pre-stripped this at the factory quite a bit longer than I would uh, like to see it. But on a ground wire, that doesn't matter. You've got a bare ground you're connecting to anyway. If these were stripped that long, I'd be cutting a little bit of the wire off. So hold the ends together nice and even and straight as you can see and spin your wire nut on. 
and I like to make sure they're good and snug so that the wire wraps around itself about one and a half times and then you know you've got a good tight connection. Tug test to make sure it doesn't come apart. Now I'll connect my black wire. See I've got the insulation stripped nice and even there. You want to make sure that the wire nut's going to cover all the bare wire when you're done. So make the ends nice and even. That's very important to make sure that your, your ends are even when you spin on the wire nut. Otherwise it'll just take the stranded one and pull it on top of the solid conductor, wrap it around it, and you won't have a good solid connection. So there's a good solid connection. Tug test again. And do the same for this wire. Line them up nice and even. Okay, our connections are made. Tug test again, make sure they don't come out. Now I just want to tuck all these wires back into the box. Out of the way, make sure we don't have any pinch points. I've got to have quite a bit of room as you see the body of this dimmer switch is quite a bit bigger than the old single pole switch so I've got to make sure I've got room for that to fit inside. So I want to tuck those wires back, the nuts back into the corner and the ground wire and with a bare ground wire out to a switch like that you want to make sure at the back of the box you don't push a bare ground wire in against one of the terminals of the other switch because then when you go reset the breaker it's going to trip immediately on a short circuit. Okay so test fit the dimmer in a bit. I'm just going to have to juggle those wires around a little bit to make some more room and I see I'm going to have to break off my trim tabs because we're in a two gang box here and it's not going to fit properly against the other switch so these tabs are meant to break off when you're mounting it in a multi-gang assembly such as this. Okay, as you can see I've broke off the tabs so it'll fit in beside the other switch and it fits nicely into place now as I've tucked all the wires up and out of the way in this two-gang device box. Very little pressure it fits into place so I can put in my device mounting screws. I'd like to start one and start the second one before I tighten them right in. Line that up in the middle of that oblong slot and hopefully when I go test fit my plate it'll fit if I've got all the holes lined up. Okay, test fit the plate. Perfect. Now all I gotta do is put my Plate screws back in, turn the power back on and test the operation of the new dimmer. All right, put in the plate screws, always line them up either vertically or horizontally. All depends on your preference, I like them vertically. Make sure you're not cross threaded, as you see there, I'm backing up because it's not screwing in there. I had that one cross threaded so you want to make sure it's not cross threaded when you go to put it into the device. Should, should turn in nice and easy for the first few turns. And then line them up vertically. Okay, we're ready to go turn on the power and test the circuit. Plates installed, screws are in. Test the old light switch from the kitchen lights and it's working. Here's how the new slide dimmer works. This is the little preset level that you can adjust for brighter or dimmer, brighter or dimmer, and on off. So you turn it on, you can bring up the level of the lights and leave it where you like it, adjust it as you, as you please, and when you shut it off, it shuts off the fixture. So we'll show you the fixture. All right, testing the fixture, turn it on to my preset level I had before. It's about 50% brightness. You can crank it up to full or bring it down for mood lighting. Perfect. This light was way too bright for us while sitting there having dinner, so this will just be the desired effect. Off, on, and another job complete.